Would you have you reached out to Nene to kind of ask him about what the city is like and how to experience it? I haven't talked to him uh, yet after I signed. Uh, I remember when he was playing here, uh, playing together in the national team, he would always talk about the team, how great they were and uh, how good of organization they are. And I think uh, um, when, when the opportunity came for me to sign with the Wizards, that was something that was in the back of my mind. You know, those conversations with Nene back in the day was uh, really helpful for me to uh, mm -hmm. choose the, the Wizards. Appreciate it, man. Welcome to town. Thank you. Welcome to DC, Raul. Thank you. Um, I'm interested to see, you know, what is your perspective for one on Russell Westbrook as a player and that, that kind of dynamic? I know when you joined the team, it was coming into it, it was John and Brad. That's the kind of the dynamic you were preparing yourself to work with. So now with that quickly being a different uh, change of plans, how do you view Westbrook and also how have your you know, interaction with him, been since you've been here with the team? It's been great. You know, uh, it's crazy because we've had dinner together at the bubble. I didn't know him before that. Um, we had dinner in the same table. We were hanging out with Tobias, some guys from Philly that know uh, Russ. And I think we talked a little bit there. And then now we're here together, you know. I don't think it changed anything for me. You know, I came prepared to uh, do my job, do the best I can to uh, – you know, um, get better every day and, and worry about the things that I got to worry to and, and, just, uh, and just enjoy and have fun, you know, and it's been great with, uh, I didn't have that much uh, time with uh, John Wall. I think I saw him a couple of times, but we're not practicing. So, um, but with Westbrook, it's been great. You know, he got here yesterday. He bring that voice. He bring that uh, leadership that I think it's great for that team. And, um, and uh, I'm very happy and I'm very, I'm excited to see what's going on in the, uh, with the season. And also, what are, your, what are your expectations? Maybe not expectations, but what are your early takeaways from Denny of Dia? And what do you see from him um, so far practicing with him and just being around? Yeah, he's a, he's a good young player. You know, he played overseas um, in the a, in a, in a best league overseas, you know. So he's been playing against pros for, for a while. So he has this knowledge on the game. He knows spacing he knows a lot of things that usually some young guys does don't know it so i think uh i think he's gonna learn he's still young he has a lot a lot um space to improve and and he's one of those guys that like to ask you questions and listen and and trying to uh get better so i think he ha he has a, a bright future and and he's gonna be great for us thank you again welcome to dc okay fred Hey man, how you doing? Good, good. Um, I am just curious, kind of, kind of building off of that. What, what do you see as, as your role within this team? I know, like specifically, they had talked about a resting plan for John. Was that something they discussed with you when you came in? And, and if so, what do you see your role now that obviously Russell has has come in as well? Um, yeah, that was something we talked about uh, um, before. You know, uh, Russ came here. Uh, we knew that John Wall was going to rest some games coming back from injury. That would be an opportunity for me. I don't know what's, uh, what changes for me, but like I said, my mindset's still the same. You know, I got to, every time I go out there, I have to prove myself and I have to play well. I have to uh, do the best as I can. And I think that would be something for coach to decide, you know, what's my role. And, and I'm just trying to enjoy. I'm just trying to uh, take day by day and, and, and get better. Uh, honestly, uh, it's early. Uh, we haven't played a game. We haven't even, we barely play five on five on, on practices, but um, that's something that honestly, I don't, I don't know what's going to be my role, but whatever it is, I'll be ready to, to go. Thank you. Yeah. Chase. Hey, Rahul, welcome to DC. Thank you. Um, Tommy Shepard talked about your defense and how well it shows up in analytics uh, is a big reason why they signed you. Uh, what do you think you could bring to this team on the defensive end? Um, I think uh, I understand space and I will always fight. You know, I'm never going to stop on defense. I'm going to rotate, scramble, and that's the way kind of that we play defense over here from the from what I saw the last, the, the last two, three days in training camp. Uh, they like that 
that fight on defense, you know, that keep playing, whatever going on, you just got to find the next man. And I think uh, I, uh, um, I'm very good at it. And also my voice, I think is something that I can help the young guys to kind of understand and uh, uh, help with details on picking roles on, on the weak side, help. Uh, I think I've been in the league enough. I've seen enough. So I think that voice is going to be something that will help the defense and also that, uh, I think that energy and um, and that fight. I think that every dis every every defense needs it. Uh, Yenny. Hi, hi, Raúl. Um, my question is, lo hace en español. Eh, mi pregunta es primero el cambio de equipo. Este, que te afecta, ya es tu tercer equipo psicológicamente en tu juego y mi segunda pregunta sería ¿cómo este, te planteas o qué aspiraciones tienes en ese recambio con Brady, um, Brady o con Russell Westwood? Sí, bueno, eh, yo creo que como he hablado antes en inglés la mentalidad no cambia, ¿no? Yo quiero eh, eh, dar el máximo cada día, hacer mi mejor cada día y bueno, la oportunidad que tenga como antes en los últimos eh, cinco años en, en la liga voy a aprovecharla, ¿no? Eh, tenemos un equipo joven, un equipo que eh, tienen dos líderes, que es Brad Bill y Russell, y creo que vamos a jugar detrás de ellos, ¿no? Yo creo que ellos traen mucha energía, traen mucha eh, calidad para nuestro equipo y, y bueno, espero que eh, podamos ayudarles a, 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 a llegar al, al playoff y a intentar lo máximo posible de hacer un, un, un buen campeonato. Gracias. Hey, Raul. Welcome to DC. I'm curious, you know, obviously, I'm sure it's been an adjustment in a short off season for you, but what have been some of your early takeaways about the Wizards as an organization? You know, the biggest thing, and I've, I've told them even before uh, we, start, we start training camp, was the, the vibe I got from the team in the bubble. You know, a lot of young guys hungry and, and playing, the playing, playing team back. That was when I came here, uh, there's no ego. Working hard, we compete, and then uh, after practice over, everybody, everybody's good. You know, everybody uh, um, are just enjoying. You know, enjoying the journey, enjoying uh, being together, enjoying the opportunity. I think that's um, that's huge for a team that. Uh, wanted to want to accomplish something and uh and uh, i think that's the that's the biggest thing that i saw uh even before i came here and now with training camp i think i've seen uh even more fred did you have another one no sorry i still haven't figured out zoom and <laughs> I'm, to lower my hands. I'm good no problem uh ben hey ho welcome to dc I was just curious, now that you guys are a couple of days into training camp, is there something that stood out for you um, in comparison to the past teams you've played for, including the Sixers or Jazz? Um, yeah, I think what I, what I said, you know, the, the vibe that we have over here, um, we compete, we play hard, um, but everybody help each other, you know, there is no... Uh, like I said, no ego. Everybody's trying to get better. Everybody's trying to compete. It's like a health, you know, competition in, on the court where um, we all know we can only play five guys on the court. So everybody's trying to get their minutes and, and fight and, and uh, get better. You know, every time everybody's trying to prove something. Most of the guys still have something to prove uh, in this league. So I think it's a healthy competition. That's what I think it's too doubt for me. Uh, like I say, we haven't um, done a lot of five on five or playing games, so um, it's hard for me to tell. But that's the thing that I think is stood up for me. All right, last question. We're going to go to Glenn. Oh, welcome to DC. Um, you know, playing for Quinn Snyder um, and and Brett Brown. What when you look back and you know you're entering into the NBA, what have you learned from those guys in playing for those two teams? I mean, a lot. Um, I think mostly from uh, Quinn Schneider, because I was there for four years, you know. So I think uh, he gave me the opportunity in this league. He 
kind of took me under his arm the first year and just taught me a lot of things that coming from overseas you don't know, you know, like how to play defense on some guys, how to uh, be more aggressive, how to, uh, I don't know, impact the game. And those things from, from Queen in my first uh, four years with Utah was, was huge. Um, the knowledge of the game, knowing when to take a shot or um, making better decisions, um, spacing, kind of understanding that who you have around you. I think uh, that was great from, from Queen with, um, with the Utah Jazz. And I think with Brad, um, it, was a, it was a tough year. You know, we, we didn't play as expected. And um, I think he's, um, he's patient, you know, the way he kind of like approach every bad moment that we had and just being patient and trusting and being positive. I think that was something I learned from him. And um, I think for me, it's great. You know, the situation I've been the last, I think three years in the league, it's just never knowing when you're going to play and going through up and downs. And I think having this patient and um, working hard every day and just being ready, uh, it's something that it's, it's been great for me. Um, and I think that's something I, I learned a little bit. I had that before, but I learned a little even more than um, from, from Brett with Philly last year. Hey, what's going on? What's up? How you doing? I'm great, man. Uh, I would ask you what sneakers you wore today in practice, but I'll say that for later. Can oh. you speak to this being your third year? What do you have to do, do you think, to earn the swing position job um, the start of the season? Uh, I mean, the biggest thing for me is just coming in here and you know, playing with confidence. I mean, for me personally, I don't think there's anything on the court that I'm not capable of. Um, I feel like in the bubble, I got a chance to show that. And Tommy and Brooks gave me an opportunity to go out there and play my game and put the ball in my hands. And so at the end of the day, for me, I think that's really it. It's just me going out and playing and being confident in my play. So, and Just to follow up on going from rookie year to last year to now, like, where do you see your biggest growth? Maybe off the court, on the court? Uh, just as a young player in this league? Uh, I would just say for me uh, this year is just being vocal, uh, just kind of taking, like I said, just taking what I learned in the bubble and, you know, bringing it to training camp and just making that a habit, you know, just being that leader. Because at the end of the day, when you don't have guys like Brad and Bertans out there and stuff like that, those guys who are usually vocal in practice, you know, somebody has to step up. And it's one of those things where, at the end of the day, you know, Brad needs help being a leader too. And so that's one thing I'm learning and just kind of earning my respect, you know, especially coming in here this year and just kind of setting the tone and setting the standard. So, so yeah. Chase. Hey, what's up, Troy? Hey, how you doing? Good, man. Um, when Russell Westbrook entered the league in 2008, you were nine years old. <laughs> what's it like uh, being his teammate right now? Obviously, I'm sure you grew up watching him. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a cool experience, you know, especially with guys that you've watched for so long. And now that they're your teammates, and you hear all the stories and stuff like that. But you're really up close and personal. And especially me coming into my third year and kind of having some years on my belt, it definitely is a, a good experience. And he's definitely somebody just like Brad, like I want to learn from and just, you know, pick their brains. These, these guys are both all stars. And I feel like they complement each other very well, just their personalities and how much they love the game, you know, they don't take the great game for granted at all. So I think they'll definitely be good together. And what's it been like facing him so far as an opponent? Uh, I don't know if you've matched up with him directly, but it, I, I would imagine it's an experience. No, for sure. I mean, you guys hear all the stories, you know, he's 110 every time he steps on the court and, you know, that that's real life. That's real. And so, you know, it's just one thing is you always know that every day that he steps on the court, he's going to bring the intensity. So you better be ready for your matchup. But playing against him, you know, the past couple of years has been pretty good. So. Ava. Hey, Troy. Um, nice to see you again. Obviously, one of the things that you improved the most in the bubble is everyone kind of lauded your um, leadership growth and how much, like you said, how much more vocal you were. When you then had to kind of leave and, and take a pause so you could have your off season and start working on your game, is that something you set aside or how do you kind of work on that and make sure you pick up where you left off now that you arrived back in training camp months later? Um, I think it's just like I said, just setting a standard, you know, like every day I come out here, you know, I try to keep the intensity up. Um, always try to be vocal regardless if, if it's unnecessary or not. Like, you know, I'm going to talk, you know, I'm going to be loud in the gym, clapping. And so, you know, just 
try to make that the culture and try to make that the normal around here. And so just trying to do my part. And like I said, Brad, we know Brad, this is Brad's team. And so at the end of the day, he needs people to step up and be a leader on the court. And, you know, me, for me to be able to take some of that pressure off of him definitely helps. So. And then what did you focus on in your game just in the, in the short break you did have from basketball? Um, I would just say the same thing that I was working on in the bubble, just working on my body fat, just keeping sure that my body is right and being able to guard, quick guards and making those next level jumps physically. And then three point shooting, obviously that's a big thing for me. And I definitely feel like I'll do a good job of that this year. Thanks, Troy. Dave Johnson. Hey, Troy, uh, can you just talk about the, the, the vibe around the team when you think about you know, Bertans is coming back. Uh, the, the the draft was a success. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, what what the vibes like uh, as you talk about everything that's happened in the off season. Now you're bringing it to the court. Um, I would just say it's just good energy. I felt like Tommy and Coach Brooks have done a great job of just keeping everybody organized and you know just talking to us and you know keeping us together as a team. You know, there's been a lot of stuff that's happened this off season, but you know through the development of these past couple of years, you know, um, especially me coming in my third year. Rui had a good year this year, you know, or last year, you know, especially, you know, we got guys like Bonga and Mo Wagner. We picked up Denny. So, you know, we're just adding pieces of guys that are really complimentary and that want to play together and that want to win. So I think it's definitely building a good culture and, you know, we just got to translate that to the court. Fred. Hey, Troy, how you doing, man? Good, how are you? I'm good. Um, I'm just wondering, last time we really got a chance to talk to you in the bubble, you were talking about how two of the things you worked on were kind of quickness and being able to guard smaller guards as well as kind of lead ball handling and that kind of stuff. Is that, was that your continued focus during the real off season? Did you have other stuff? How, how did you operate there? What did you work on the most? Uh, I mean, for me personally, I think the biggest thing like was just watching film from the bubble. Um, obviously, with Russ and Brad uh, being our primary ball handlers, of course, um, I'll be able to get my pick and rolls and stuff like that. But for me personally, I feel like that type of mindset of me playing that guard position never really goes away. And so, of course, you key in on those things. But the biggest thing for me is just making sure that I could be complimentary to those guys and being able to fill that role of me being able to knock down shots because they're both really good at penetrating and kicking um, and getting guys open. So that and then just you know like you said my lateral quickness and uh, just working on everything overall just trying to be a really good complimentary player but then at the same time knowing when to be dominant and when to attack and be my own player you know so definitely finding that balance and and just one quick follow-up on that I I know ultimately you do you do want to be able to get to as high as you can as a playmaker and all of that uh you you've got a guy who just won an MVP at that position uh what what are you asking him? Like, what are what, you said you want to pick his brain? What questions are you asking him? What are you trying to learn from him right now? Um, I think the biggest thing is just like reads and stuff like that. You know, obviously, I'm not the most athletic guy like Russell Westbrook, but at the end of the day, you know, with a guy that has that mindset and has been in the league and is a nine time all star, you know, they definitely see things and see the game a lot different. And it's, it's more of a mental game than it is a physical game at that point, you know? And so definitely just trying to pick his brain off of stuff, him playing off the pick and roll, his reads, you know, just stuff like that, that you don't ever, like, you don't get to see that every day. You know, same thing I do with Brad. I ask a lot of questions just because it's like, okay, well, yeah, I'm an NBA player, but at the end of the day, if you have more experience than me and you've been a two-time All-Star and I haven't, I definitely want to pick your brain and learn from you. So, you know, whatever comes up, I'll definitely ask. And those dudes, those dudes do a great job of, you know, being open ears and never making us feel like we're asking dumb questions, even though we're young and stuff. So, so they do a good job of leading us by that. So. Awesome. Thank you, Troy. Yep. Quentin. What's good, TB? What's up? How you doing? I'm good. Um, it's no secret. I mean, you were in the league. Well, you're in the league entering your third year. You kind of grew into knowing John and Brad. So kind of take us behind the curtain to when you got that news that John was going to be swapped for Russell Westbrook. And, um, you know, kind of you and John's relationship over the first two years you've been in the league. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely crazy. Um, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's hard, you know, because those are guys that, you know, you played with and guys that when that was my first year being in the league, you know, John was there and guys that, like you guys have said, it's, I was like, what, eight or nine when John came into the league? Like, you know, so you definitely 
build those relationships and stuff like that. But it definitely comes with the business side of things. But just from my standpoint of being with John, I just want to thank him like, just out loud and acknowledge that because whenever I had questions and he was hurt, make it easy for me to go talk to him or ask questions and stuff like that. And like I said, he never made it seem like it was a dumb question and he was willing to help. So, so yeah, but at the end of the day, like I said, it's a part of the business. And so we all have to be ready for that side of it. And also I saw this off season, you're blogging, you're vlogging, you're doing all these things, you know, kind of talk about your passion for the journalism side as well, obviously. And also what you're trying to do as an influencer with, you know, your YouTubing and all that stuff and gaming as well, even though you're not better than me at Warzone, but you know, Anyways, um, but nah, uh, for me personally, it's just one of those things where I really enjoy it, uh, the vlogs and stuff like that, just the, the process of putting them together and, you know, kind of having a platform and just having fun with it. You know, I feel like as NBA players, people put a lot of pressure on us to just dribble and shoot and, you know, to not be our own people. And so for me, I refuse to kind of stay in that box of just being a basketball player, you know, especially when you have the platform and this isn't given forever, you know, everybody's career is different. And so for me, I just try to take advantage of the time and just do what I'm passionate. So I would definitely say the vlog thing for me is definitely another way to just get away from basketball and do something I love. Appreciate that TV. Sure. All right, we got time for a couple more Winston. Hey TB, what's up, man? How you feeling? Good. How are you doing? All right. Um, Everybody's answer to this question is always going to be different, but what are your what are your expectations for this season, whether it be on the court, off the court? What are your expectations for yourself uh, entering this the, your all important third year? Uh, for me personally, I mean, not to put like pressure on myself or anything like that, but it's just about making a jump. You know, every year since I've been in the league, I feel like I've done that. And so this third year, I feel like the expectation is like, OK, you're a pro. You know, like at this point, like I, they've given me time to develop and let me be who I am. And as a player, even getting to go into the bubble and have the ball in my hand. So now it's more so of me just playing my game and coming in night in and night out and just making sure that I'm comfortable and just going out and playing my game, regardless of what that is and just doing whatever the team needs to win. So, Cool. Thank you very much. All right. Last question from Neil. Hey, Troy, I hope you're doing well. Um, Obviously, you know, it's only been three days, but has there been anything that besides yourself and besides Russell Westbrook, has there been anything else that's kind of caught your eye in these early days of camp? How could you say that again? Besides yourself and besides Russell Westbrook, has there been anything else that has caught your eye in camp so far? Uh, just the energy, man. The energy around this building is really good right now. I think everybody's really excited for this year and just, you know, knowing the opportunity that we have, you know, especially with guys getting time to develop and coming in here day in and day out and having the facilities and stuff like that. You know, I think everybody's really excited to just go out and play and just be the team that we know we can be. You know, there's going to be some ups and there's going to be some downs, but at the end of the day, I feel like we're fully capable of being a playoff team. So at the end of the day, we just got to come in here and hold each other accountable, you know, and just making sure we're working hard, listening to coach. And I think that everything else will play out the way it's supposed to. So. Thanks, Troy. What's up, Scotty? How are you? Doing good, Chris. How you doing? Doing well. Um, so what was it like when he was dribbling the ball today? <laughs> and you know who I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. It's, um, it definitely felt like uh, old times. I've, I've seen it. I've seen the intensity. I've seen him raise the group's uh, level before. I'm sure the players didn't, you know, didn't realize that that's what he does. Uh, but when you could tell that everybody locked in and everybody raised their level up, uh, the thing that they're going to know that this is just not because it's his first day. Uh, this is who he is. That's how he prepares. That's how he uh, gets ready. And that's how he's always like that. And, and, and his, his voice was heard. Uh, he just has a good way about him. He's upbeat. He's positive, but he's, in, he's intense. And he, he knows how to, it's crazy that he's only been practicing one day, you watched him one day, you know, today's the first day, but just knows how to, you know, talk to players and, and, and get them to do the right things. I know how you are. You, 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 you do things that kind of get players' attention without them really figuring it out until they go, oh, that's what coach meant. So was it you 
Pat, Ish, or somebody on the medical staff that was monitoring people that have never practiced with Russ? And what were their facial expressions when he started to get going? Um, you can just see it. I mean, when he was, uh, like I said, he just has a way about him. This guy is one of the, he's, kind of, he's obviously a first team or first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, but he's uh, now, I mean, he's definitely, a, he's a coach on the floor. I think that partnership with him and Brad and they're about the same things and, and they're about basketball. That's, that's their job and that's what they love to do. And all the other things are basically, it comes from that. Uh, but you can see the players' intensity. Uh, you can see their face, enthusiasm. Like I said the other day that some of these guys were nine, 10 years old and they just started following basketball and they were seeing Russell's in his, Russell in his first couple of years in the league. So they grew up watching him. Uh, and I remember having this conversation um, many, many years ago when I first started coaching uh, Russell and the group that I had, that how, how they looked up to the Kobe and the Shaqs and even the Jordans, uh, that they keep doing what they're doing, that all the younger generations are going to be looking up to you that same way, the talent base that they had. And it's funny, that's what they're doing now. Uh, and he's been in the league for going on 13 years now, but it's, it's, it was a special moment just to see all the guys, but they're in for, they're, if they don't know, they're in for a surprise because this is going to be it every day. This is how he is. This is how he prepares. This is how he's focused on uh, getting better himself and getting our team better as well. Appreciate it, Scotty. Thanks. Thank you. Fred? Hey, Scott. Uh, just following up on that. It sounds like Russell was very comfortable during his first practice, uh, based on what you just said. Uh, was, uh, maybe this is a better question to ask him, but did you get a sense there was a dipping the toe in the water from him, or was it just a full-on Russell performance immediately? No, he's, you know, you know him. And the people that don't know him, there's no, no, I'm going to fill this thing out. I'm going to just, I'm going to, take the temp temperature of the group. No, that's not how, that's not, I don't want him to be that way. That's not why, that's not why we have him. We have him, he's all in. And our players know that. This guy is, he's elite. Uh, he's an elite leader. Uh, his professionalism, it's the thing that I love about him. It's not like he's doing things and I always would tell or the group or, you know, early on in his career, these are the things you're supposed to do. This, these aren't things that we should be surprised or you should be like, you should be like um, rewarded for. This is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be a good teammate. You're supposed to pull and pull, uh, push each other. You're supposed to get on guys. That's what, that's what the leaders do. And, and he did that today. And um, yeah, he, he was good. And I, I'm sure our players were, felt the same way because the coaching staff, they saw it immediately. Dave Johnson. Scott, it, it's hard to believe a week from today is the first preseason game. Uh, what, what, do you have a checklist of things that will make for the next six days you hope are accomplished? Or what, what will make a, a good week before you play that first game? Well, we're just going to just put the time in and, and keep, keep um, working on things that we need to get going into our first game in Philly. The exhibition is all part of that. The three games are all part of the – getting ready for that first game. Uh, I'm sure most of the guys aren't going to play all three. Some probably will. Um, but it's, we have the checklist that we want to get accomplished each day uh, going through training camp. Uh, things that we, we feel pretty comfortable, we move on to the next thing. If we don't feel comfortable, we stay with it. Uh, we want to keep working on uh, important things that we felt going into the season that we need to improve on. and, and to have our players engaged and, 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 and ready. And I'm, sh I'm sure the next couple of days, we're going to have uh, a few more players added to the group. And today, you know, it's always, it's always that, it seems like we've been in the league for 30 years now. It's always that third day that they call the hump day for a reason. Uh, having, having Russell here on that third day, there was no hump day. Guys were locked in and they were fired up and they played at the intensity that you need to have to get better as a group. Chase. 
Hey, Scott. Um, with so much three-point shooting in this era, there's a lot, of, lot more long rebounds. How valuable is it to have rebounding at the guard and wing position? You have Russell Westbrook, but I think Troy Brown Jr. also brings some value there. Yeah, I mean, we need it. That's, a, that's an area that we, were, we struggled with on the defensive end. There's many times where we played solid defense, we just couldn't come up with the rebound. So we need uh, – we have, we have one of the best ever to do it, uh, along with Troy. Troy does it at a high level. Uh, but we need to do it by committee. I think our the guys that we picked up, uh, even even Robin, maybe he doesn't get the rebound, but he he um, clogs things up and does a great job of boxing out. And TB has gotten better. And Brewie's going to you know also continue. But rebounding is a huge part of the game. You don't if you don't rebound, you don't have a chance to win night in and night out. And I've heard you talk before about how players act after losses and how. Russell Westbrook's maybe a little bit different than a lot of the, maybe some of the younger guys. Um, was he always like that? Um, Cause obviously you knew him younger in his, in his career. Was he always someone who took losses really hard? And do you remember like a story that maybe illustrates that? Yeah, I mean, um, losing's not an option. You know, I, I know uh, that's how, that's his mindset. And the one thing that I you know, love about him is, is he competes. He leaves everything on the floor. He doesn't go to. He doesn't go home at night thinking, "Man, I should have played a little harder tonight." Uh, he knows that this is a hard league to win games, and it takes a lot to win a game, let alone uh, many games or a playoff series. And but but he one thing that he will always um, relate to the guys, man. We got to we got to commit to this game and not focus on anything else. These next forty eight minutes are really what we've been working hard. Um, we got to put our best foot forward to give us give us about ourselves the best chance to win. Um, we've had him at a young age, so it's always been that way, which was great. He's been, you know, his parents raised him the right way. He he understands what what we're here for. You know, we it's a it's a uh, it's about winning games, and this this group that we have, you know, last year obviously we made a, a transition to to to. Um, work on some things and, and change things up. And it, it's, a lot of guys got some good experience, but it, like I said, first day of practice, you know, now we, we got to continue to grow up in this league and, and do it and do it quickly. And then we add some more players to the mix. I think that can help, help bring that group up to speed. Glenn. Hey, Scott. Um, yesterday I asked um, Russell, how do you coach you? How would you coach you? And he was like, I don't know. You got to ask Scott. Um, hey, hey, ask him again today because I want to I want to be able to find that out. Yeah. But, you know, the, the reason I asked him that is and he, he did say he was coachable and he's always been coachable. And, you know, you, you obviously had him early, but players like him that have that, you know, another level of intensity, they're never easy to coach because they're going to make mistakes and you got to let them make mistakes. But. You know, and, and I know you, you know, you can't treat every player the same, but, you know, how was it coaching him then and compared to what's going to be now? Well, I think I've gotten that question so many times, especially when I was coaching him at the time. He plays with this, this spirit, this fiery intensity that, that you would think outside looking in, that you would think that it's very hard to, con to control or, or, or manage. Uh, but people were always surprised with my answer. He was one of the easiest guys I've ever coached. But I really appreciate and, and admire guys that, that compete. Uh, and I knew what it, what it took to get into the league and to stay in the league, that you had to be on all the time. And, and, and a lot of times when you're so talented and, and, and so gifted, uh, and you're given so much early on, I think sometimes, you know, you always, it, it, it doesn't always translate to being ready to play. And Russell wasn't given a lot early. You know, he was hardly recruited out of, out of high school. Uh, and then when we drafted him, a lot of people thought that he wouldn't be drafted so high. And then, then after that, they thought that maybe he would be a sixth man of the year. Uh, but then after that, maybe he would be a two guard. Um, but the thing that I, that I love about him is that 
you don't ever have to coach effort with him. You never have to mention it with him. Uh, and that's, that's helps, that helps the team grow uh, in this league because we have a lot of young, impressionable players on our team. One thing that a coach can tell you, but when you're talking about a, a player that his level and they see him do it, they listen. They listen. They, they, they listen pretty, pretty um, uh, intently. Thanks. Ava? Hey, Scott, I got another rest question for you, so I hope you're not tired of them yet. Um, <laughs> um, one thing he said over the, over the years is um, how much you taught him and how much he worked on his court vision um, when he was young and, and coming up with you. And I think that's something most reporters at least think of as being very innate. So I'm wondering how you went about working on that with him. Was it just experience? Was it going through the playbook a ton? Or what was your approach there? Well, when you have a, a young player uh, in the league, you try to, you try to help them uh, understand all the reads. And a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of positions are hard in the league, but as a point guard, it's, it's a difficult position. It's a, it's a tough position. You have to know everything. You got to know time, score, situation, who's hot, who's not, who has a shot, who has foul trouble. Um, Everything. I mean, there's a there's a, a list of things that you have to be able to know, and you have to know it uh, instantly. Uh, otherwise, that you're not going to put yourself or the team in a good spot. And what we would do, we would do, and and, and I do it now. We every drill, every warm up, everything that we do is is based on how we can help our guys see things uh, clear, see things with and precision. And Russell, early on, we did a lot of things like that. His skill, his work ethic, and, and his, his talent, and his toughness, and his determination and drive helped him be all this. And coaching, we had our, we had our part, but it was, it was about the work that he's put in. And, and we're doing it. I don't have to worry about you know, teaching him those reads. I mean, he, he's picked up the offense pretty quick. He's had some of our sets are are the same, some of them are a little different, but he's picked things up. And the one thing I love about our, uh, our leaders is that they see things, they can come to me or come to one of our assistants and say, hey, I, I, I like this little set we do. Hey, let's add this little wrinkle to it. Because a lot of times we don't see it, or a lot of times we think the group is not ready, uh, but they, they, they know it, they see it, and it, they're, they're, in, they're in the trenches with these guys. And, but Russell is a high level, high, high, high level IQ. I mean, one of the highest I've ever been around. He understands the game at a, at a, and he's did it for a long time. And if I could ask a follow up about um, your guys who you had in the bubble, specifically like Bonga, um, TB, and, and Thomas. Um, I'm sorry, I always get the TBs mixed up. You guys need better nicknames. There are two TBs. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> did you see those guys pick up? Where they stopping? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, you guys looking at me. <laughs> sorry. Um, did you see those guys, uh, your young guys in the bubble, who kind of you saw make those strides? Do you feel like they picked up where they left off when you guys came back from from Florida? Yeah, I mean the bubble was uh, it's great. I mean being one of the 22 teams, our guys got a lot of great experience. Um, we didn't win enough games that we would love to have won, but we were in every game. We competed. We were a lot of guys were in positions they probably, well, they won't be in this year. You know, if, if everybody comes back and we stay healthy, they're not going to be in those positions. Um, but that those positions that they were in in Orlando is going to help them get better in the in their role that they will have now. And I think it it's, it helps, and it, plus it gave us an extra couple of months to to be with the guys other than uh, if we didn't have that, it would have been, you know, uh, you know early March uh, since the guys would have been able to be on the court playing five on five. It's all about growth and, 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 and our players were so young that when you have time together, every day together, uh, it helps their growth and get them where we feel that the group can be. All right, just a couple more here, Quentin. How you doing, Coach? Great. A uh, few of the players that we've talked to so far have all pretty much cited the the vibe being different at camp, especially the returning guys. I mean, uh, Raul said that the energy is there. 
Troy Brown said the vibe was different as well. Everybody's excited. So I know you guys are all tomorrow. What is your assessment of how camp has been so far for you this season through the first week? Uh, it's been great. You know, I thought, like I said, uh, going into even last season, we changed up uh, a lot of the things that we were doing. We brought in a lot of players that we're going to use uh, last season to gain gain some experience and and be together. And we almost it was almost like a university atmosphere. And today, the last three days, it's almost like um, Wizard U. I thought the guys really uh, were, were locked in enthusiasm, the passion. And I'm big on that. I'm a big on enthusiasm because we're all lucky to do what we do. Mm -hmm. And you got to be able to have that and bring that every day because uh, sometimes it can get away from you pretty quick. So you I always try to keep everybody uh, perspectives in the right place and, and having, you know, our two leaders, um, we're going to be able to do that with, with Brad and John and the group that we have. They, they, they understand that they have to keep working and keep improving and keep better because they want to be long-term players in this league. And the guys that we picked up, uh, uh, Neto and, and some of the other guys that we added, you know, Robin and DBs coming back, those are guys who are all they're, – they're game changers to your cultures. And, and, and those guys are the guys that we want to keep bringing in and, and building our team on. And I think it's been the three three days I can't every every day it seems like it was uh well you want to win every practice as a coach and I thought we won all three. Has there been a distinguish distinguishable difference from the past few seasons in camp to this first five days for you? Well, I mean, last season I thought was good. I thought we had a lot of good energy and a lot of enthusiasm from our younger group, a lot of guys that didn't play, a lot of guys that uh, maybe had a, a year in the league, but didn't play their first year. You know, Mo and Isak, uh, but there's the whole team was like that. I thought it was good, and I thought, I mean, that's how I think that's how we played last year. We played with a lot of a lot of love for the game and a lot of almost like uh, youthful enthusiasm. And certain times it was not fun to coach because there's a lot of mistakes that they had to work themselves through. And but I, I understood, I understand that you had to be patient, and and we were. Uh, but this year's it's d definitely different. We're bringing in a, uh, like I said, nine-time All-NBA player, an MVP, uh, and still in the in the middle of his prime. Uh, and the way he prepares, it's it's priceless. And the way the guys can see him prepare and get ready for the game. He was on the court a couple hours before practice, and and th and they're gonna know. They might think, okay, maybe that's just his first day. And this is him. No, I'm telling you, he was at 11 o'clock practices that we had his first seven years when I was with him. No matter what time we came back from the road trip, he was on the court at 915. And it was like Groundhog Day. He's there every day. And today was no different. And they're going to see that. They're going to see that this is who he is. This is what he's about. He knows you have to put the work in. You just don't get it overnight. And you don't get success as a team overnight. You have to put your work in every day. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. All right, last question. We'll go back to Fred. Fred. Scott, uh, have you given any thought, might be too early for this, but you got to give in a week. So uh, have you given any thought to whether um, you're going to stagger Russ and Brad or maximize their minutes together? You know, the, 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 the great thing having uh, Russell and, and Brad now They've both been in the league for quite a bit. You know, been around and had a lot of success. Uh, and they understand. Um, they don't, like there are certain guys that you know, you, 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 you coach and the routine, you can't mess up their routine. And a lot of times you try to stay with the same routine. And a lot of times whether an injury took place or the referee gave you two or three quick fouls. So it just changed up the whole rotation patterns. I think those guys are um, have enough experience that it doesn't really matter who comes out first, who doesn't come out first, who plays more minutes in the first quarter, who doesn't. We, we, will, we will find the best way to keep them um, on the court and fresh, uh, not only each game, but throughout the season. And I think they're both 
they both established how they play and, 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 and what they do. But I think also, we also have a really good um, backup point guards and backup wing players that to maybe, may, maybe they can handle and manage the team without having one of them on the floor. I think that's when you become really good, where you don't have to have one of your you know, star players on the floor and you can still you know, carry the team and keep moving, this, uh, moving that scoreboard in the right direction. So that's all remains to be seen. That's going to be a preseason work in progress and also early in the season probably just as well. And it's also fluid. It's not, nothing's going to be etched in stone. It's not, we can, those guys have enough in, enough who they are that I don't have to worry about the messing up the flow of their, their game.